you really can employ this amazing modality to not only boost the way that you look, but the way that you feel, and also your potential longevity, how long you can possibly live. If there is a modality that I have grown to love almost as much as microneedling, how much I loved microneedling seven years ago, it is sauna. Now, I have been having a love affair with LED. That's probably my very favorite modality. But sauna has crept in and become a part of my daily routine. And it's something that I think everybody should know about. Now in Finland, an interesting little tidbit, there are more saunas than there are cars. There are 5 million plus people in Finland and there are over 2 million saunas. So you can guess that a lot of the research has come out of Finland. Now there's a main researcher that I was studying or really looking into his research. I'm gonna put his name up here on the screen because I know I would butcher it. But basically he did a study back in the 80s and he followed men for 20 years. What they found was frequent sauna use correlated to less cardiac events as well as a lower all-cause mortality. So the, re the all any cause was lowered by doing frequent sauna. So in general, you can make the leap that sauna is just really good for your overall health and your overall longevity. The things that sauna is really good for that I could find that I thought were really impactful are your heart. So we just talked about that, but basically frequent sauna use, so two to four times a week up to seven times a week is good for your heart health. Now beyond your heart, it's good for your brain. So there's something that happens when you sit in a sauna or you're in a sauna blanket. When you want to get out of that heat, when you feel that you're uncomfortable, your body produces a hormone and that hormone is kind of the discomfort hormone. It's the opposite of endorphin. And basically that hormone is you're uncomfortable. You are not feeling great. You want to get out of that heat. Well, when you do get out of that heat, what happens is your body compensates for the production of that hormone by increasing the ability to uh, capture endorphins. So you have a better ability to be happy. You have a better ability to take in the happy chemical and improve your mood. So by sitting through that bit of uncomfortableness, you improve your ability to be happy outside of the sauna. So it is really, really good for your mood, good for your brain. Also, there have been studies that show that sauna use can be really helpful for dementia and for Alzheimer's. So I, honestly, some of the science is beyond me, but I will put the links to the sources over on the blog. So if you wanna dive in a little bit deeper, but just know that there are studies that link frequent sauna use to brain health. Okay, let's talk about sauna for weight loss. Now, here's the thing. When I sauna, I sweat a ton. I mean, I really do, so I'm dripping. I sweat a ton and I always feel lighter. I feel really good after. That is water. So yes, you're going to lose weight in the form of water, but as soon as you rehydrate, you're gonna regain that weight. Sauna is not the way to lose weight if you feel that you need to lose weight. Heat is being studied as a way to convert white fat into beige and brown fat. Now why that matters and who would even know that there are different kinds of fat if you weren't like a scientist is that white fat doesn't do much for us, right? But beige and brown fat actually can affect our metabolism because they can affect the way that we burn calories. They actually help to burn calories, whereas white fat doesn't do anything for us at all. So indirectly, there is some potential that heat therapy, like sauna, and some other kinds of more intense heat therapy can help to convert that fat, which indirectly, of course, is gonna help us lose weight. But once again, I don't think that anybody should go into using a sauna thinking that that's gonna be some kind of a permanent weight loss solution. Yes, you may feel lighter and you may feel really good, which I definitely do. And as somebody who carries water weight and somebody who feels like I have puffiness and edema and that kind of thing, I love to hydrate a bunch with electrolytes and water. And then I love to sauna and sweat it out. It makes me feel, feel really good and feel lighter but I know that it's not weight loss. I hope that that makes sense. Now, another one that's a little bit controversial is a detox. 
So here's the thing. Detoxification really happens through our liver and that's how it's supposed to happen. Detoxing isn't really happening through our sweat, at least as far as I can understand. What we're doing when we're sweating is we're sweating out fluid and we're sweating out some minerals and stuff like that, but detoxification is going on in the liver. Now, I could see where some of what's happening in the sauna could help detox via the liver because it helps with lymphatic drainage. It helps to get the circulation going and that can help with lymphatic drainage. Lymphatic drainage can help with detox through the normal pathways. So ultimately sauna may help with detox, but not necessarily through sweat. I am studying that some more because there are some newer studies coming out that are talking about detoxification through sweat. So I'm really interested to learn more. But as of right now, the way that I understand it is the detox is really our liver and sweating is something different. Exfoliation. So sauna can actually, because it causes us to sweat, it can kind of aid in the shedding of dead skin cells. So it can help us to exfoliate. Sauna can also help to decrease puffiness. Now I kind of already talked about that, but I think that it's important to know that that is genuinely one of the big benefits of sauna. Something that I have seen personally, it really does help to just kind of de-puff and get rid of some of that excess edema, the, the bloating or just where we carry water. It really does seem to help with that quite a bit. This is something that is the bane of my existence. People love to comment on it. I hate it. I can't stand the fact that I look puffy sometimes and sauna seems to help with that greatly. So that is another huge benefit. So how can you get started doing sauna? Now, of course you could invest like I have in a walk-in sauna if you want to. Like I said, I bought mine through Higher Dose. I love it. I think it is absolutely fantastic. Put it together with a couple other people and we were able to do that ourselves and I love it. Now, the other thing, of course, like I've said, I've had my sauna blanket, a much lower entry point as far as money is concerned. I have had it for quite a long time. And at this point, my cost per usage is pretty dang low because I used it faithfully. I skipped one summer, but I used it faithfully until I bought my walk-in. And now I use them depending on the situation, depending on whether I want to lay down and relax, listen to a podcast, or if I want to go into the walk-in sauna and sit, or if I want to go in with somebody else, it's a two person, that would be how I decide. But I did notice that by getting my walk-in sauna, it did not make my blanket obsolete, which is kind of a cool thing because I still do choose to use it on occasion because I enjoy that type of relaxation so much. There are ways that you can do sauna that you don't have to buy anything to have at your house. Some people don't have the room. Some people don't want to spend that money. Some people, it's just not their thing to buy one of those to have in their home. So here's a suggestion from me to you is to look into a gym. Now, if you already have a gym membership, check and see if they have a sauna. I went and looked just to see at LA Fitness because LA Fitness is at least in half the states in our country. So I thought I'm going to look into a big chain and sure enough, they have a sauna. Now the cost to go to LA Fitness is about 40 bucks a month. And that includes being able to use their sauna. So if you are somebody who goes to the gym already, look into whether or not they have a sauna. And if they don't consider going to a different gym that does have a sauna because you get a twofer, you're already paying for the gym. Why not go somewhere where they offer sauna for free? So there are ways for you to get sauna access to sauna. It is such a benefit to our health that it is very much worth looking into. Now there's going to be some other resources for you to be able to find sauna in your area over on the blog. I encourage you to look into this and if you can give it a shot for a while, try to get two to four sauna sessions in a week. It does look to be that it is dose dependent. I have a hair in my eye, dose dependent. So you want to go two to four times a week. And if you could go more than that, that's fantastic. I notice that the more often I go, the better I feel. There is a direct relationship between how often I sauna, my mood, how I feel, my overall health. I have felt well for quite a while since I've been doing sauna, knock on, knock on wood. And uh, I do think that that is a part of my wellness is that I have been dedicating that time to, sauna 
I hope that you have a really fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.